I'm Gab. He's Jules. Blue skies over West London. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> we're not there, right? No, uh, we're, we're in Berlin, Berlin for uh, Euro 2024. This is our first Gab and Jules show from Berlin. Uh, Jules, a lot going on. Of Most course. of the favorites winning early. Yeah. And let's start with one of the favorites, although James Ollie doesn't like it when we mention that. Doesn't it? Because we shouldn't be okay. one of the favorites because we haven't proved it. Right. Uh, that's a whole other kill of fish. England coming away with a 1-0 win over Serbia. Yes, and I think for me the most important is you win, you'll start your tournament with a win. Yes, it was not maybe as convincing as we would have wanted it to be. But you've won. They've won against Croatia 1-0 in the last Euros and then went all the way to the final. It's not because you start slowly that you're not going to be good late in the tournament or you're not going to go far. Yeah, I I think it's three straight wins in major tournament openers for Gareth Southgate in sort of... Uh, you know, that narrative that they love to do in England where they explain why they haven't won everything always. Uh, it's to do with the fact that pre-Southgate, they often started badly, dropped points. Yeah. And obviously, Southgate's got that under control. Um, I think Serbia have... I think Serbia are actually a, a pretty good team. England did, like you said, they do what they do under Southgate, which is that they do put a maximum result, minimum effort, and don't run risk. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's clearly a lot of issues with this team. With the, we can focus on the positive, and we should, and Bellingham ask for people to focus on the positive. Well, hey, Bellingham asks us to focus no, on No, no, but you said that to me even when we were preparing for the show. Of course, you've won, so let's be more positive than negative. However, there are still some things in that team that, that are not working out. There's no structure tactically enough. Phil Foden's positioning, so there's a lot of things. But you're right. At least you start well. You start with a win. It doesn't matter so much how the win came. You've won. Great. Now you can focus on the next game. That might already qualify you, by the way, if you win it. Yeah, uh, and that, that's a very good point. Uh, look, normally I'd say there's time for Southgate to work things out, work out kinks. But he's not really going to work out kinks. I think he's going to go and keep playing the way he plays, which is defensively, get a goal, and then be smart and wait for your guys to go and, and, and sort it out. Yeah. Um, we'll get to Foden because I think that's, that's an, an interesting point. Mm. Also an interesting point, and I always remind us, I don't want to be boring about this, right? But there's a lot of individual things that, this is a low-scoring game and a lot of details affect it. Yeah. So, for example, if the ball doesn't get deflected on the Bellingham goal, yeah. I don't think he scores that. I agree. Because the ball, the deflection the allows the ball to hang in the air yeah. and allows him to come in with such power. 100%. Equally, Rykovic doesn't stand on his head off, Kane, on, off the, the, the Kane chance at the end. Yeah. Then it's, you know, there's a, the, the, then they score that one and it's 2 0 and everybody takes a big um, sort of breath of relief, right? Yeah. Yeah, completely. And again, I think Kane was underused in that first half. He only touched the ball twice in 45 minutes, two touches of the ball gap, which again, at for someone like him in this level, this is not really acceptable. It's not a good thing. But that's also to be sorted out because, and we, we will talk about it more in the podcast, tactically, the Bellingham positioning is preventing Kane from dropping like he likes because that area is already used by Bellingham. And that's the reason why he hardly touched the ball in that first half and not much more in the second half, to be fair. So this foreshadows what I saw. And if you look at Bellingham's heat map, I was going to say how about how Bellingham affects... Kane so much is how Bellingham affects Foden because Bellingham always goes over to Foden's side, which is fine if Foden comes inside. But we're gonna we're gonna talk about that later. I want to I want to speak about Serbia uh, a little bit as well because I looked through the individuals before the game, and this is a really talented team. And we can always talk about sort of smaller countries and about how oh look I have too many superstars in the same position. Why can't they be spread out throughout the side? And every smaller nation, so to speak, yeah. is familiar with this. Um, but I thought they gave actually a pretty good accounting of themselves, even though maybe initially, obviously Vlaovic playing behind the striker didn't really work. Yeah. Um, but in the second half, did, did England invite too much pressure or did you expect Serbia to do more? Yeah, completely. I just don't understand why England, once they score the first goal, then stop playing really and just let the ball to the opposition and let them come back into the game. And that second half, there was no control at all from England. It was all Serbia having the ball. And yeah, they didn't create massive chances. I, I, I get that. But still, you still give them the ball and let them play. And England was so deep. Everybody was so deep. They were all in their own half. For no reason. Because you're much better than the opposition. You know, yeah, Serbia I, have good players. But 
One, they never qualified for Euros before since their independence. That's Two, at the World Cup 18 months ago, they were terrible. Stolkovic is not a good coach. And yet, they've got loads of talent, but they well, don't really know how to use them. And maybe that's why they were conservative. I agree with you. All right, Jules. Uh, the biggest sort of tactical innovation, tactical shift that we saw from, uh, from Southgate is something that we saw it a couple times or bits in some of the friendlies, but... The Trent Alexander-Arnold in midfield yes. uh, move, which you took out of his hat. I think this is one situation we're going to differ a little bit. I have less of a problem with it because, frankly, if your other guys are Connor Gallagher doo -doo -doo -doo, or Kobe Mainu, yeah. well, you know, whatever, great, but he's, he's a kid. Why not try this in congested areas? Yeah, no, you can try. I just don't think he was a success. So fair enough for trying, maybe trying in a start of a tournament like this. It's, it's a gamble, you took it, okay, in the end you won. But I just, I just don't think it works. I don't think it works for Trent. And for example, you saw maybe the best Serbian chance, the Mitrovic one in the first half, that he shots wide, just wide, is Trent losing the ball. Trent, Trent can be great with the ball, of course, and I know at Liverpool he goes from that right-back position into midfield in possession, but he's got the game in front of him. He's never really with facing his own goal, recovering the ball, uh, having the ball in his feet like, he like, like on that ball that he loses for the Serbia attack. And I, th I just think this is, a, this is a, a position that you just can't say, hey, Trent, you know what? You're so good on the ball. I know you're right back. I don't fancy you as a right back, which is what Southgate thinks. So why don't you move into midfield? You do it now and again for Liverpool. You'll be great there. Here you go. I just I don't think it works and I don't think we will see it again. Yeah, see, this is one of those things where, again, why, when people ask about international football versus club football, I think that this is something that could work if England were a club team, if they actually had a chance to go and work on it. Because you could do different things. You could have him, you know, maybe he could arrive from a deeper area. Maybe Stones could step into midfield. And, you know, there, there's different ways to do this. Maybe yeah. Stones could step in, step in, into midfield, somebody drops off, I don't know, the, the fullbacks go go narrower, then, then Declan Rice could get forward more as well, which like he does for Arsenal, but you know isn't likely to do with, with England. There's a lot of things you can do mm. if you're a club coach, which you cannot do, and I can't reinforce this enough. Yeah. We can't Especially judge. Especially Southgate as well. I knew this. Hey, hey, hey that's Liverpool. free. I know he's free. Who else? Somebody else really had a go at Southgate. I don't know. Was, was it Ted Hogg? It was a bit. Was it? I, can't, I don't know. Uh, Everybody should have a go at Southgate. Stop it. Anyway. Stop it. Um, the other Southgate sort of uh, tactical. So would twist. you play Trent again? Sorry, next game do you play Trent back in midfield. Yeah, I think I think okay. I, I I think I would definitely try that. Now it's a little bit trickier because their next game is against a tougher opponent. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a better test. It's still something. It's still something actually where you have a little bit of margin for error because if they draw that game. It's not the end of the world. No, it's true. Still, still win the group, position. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, still, probably end up on, on on seven points, but I I would want to say I, and and the other reason for this is Declan Rice is not Jorginho, right? If everything gets weird and congested in the opposition part of the bus, you don't want Kane dropping off, which is why I thought you were a bit mean about his two touches because I think clearly he was told stay there, we'll get the ball to you. Foden can drop and create. Palmer can drop and create if he's playing, but he's not. He's on the bench. Mm -hmm. Bellingham can create a little bit, but then again, you also want Bellingham's strength and, and, and his timing and his intelligence running in the box. So if I want a passer, I think it's either Stones from the back, who, you know, again, by the way, it's a lot easier to be the elegant passer when you're, when you're playing for Manchester City yeah, and you yeah. can drop the ball on a dime to people who can control it anywhere. Or otherwise, you need another passer in there. And again, it's not that Kobe Mainu can't pass. It's just that he's 19. It's not that Connor Gallagher, well, okay, Connor Gallagher, Come different pass. story, right? Yeah. Different things. So for that reason, I don't think I don't think he's wrong to try this. I don't think he's wrong to maybe stick with it for another game. You could always make adjustments. Yeah, I guess so. I would play Bellingham deeper. It's as simple as that. I think he's so good that he can even make even from a deeper starting position still makes the run like for the goal. Play him Rice and Bellingham and uh, him Rice and Foden. And you put Gordon on the left, and then that's also solved your problem about the Bellingham Foden Kane conundrum, in the sense which that is the conundrum that if you look at the heat map, if you look at where Bellingham, I mean, Foden did not have a great game, 
or didn't influence the game as much as we know that, that no. he can. Yeah, on the left-hand side, he was never going to. Ooh, he's never going to. He's had good games there for well, <laughs> in the past. Yeah, but this he's is a very good player. He's saying never going to. It's a bit harsh. Well, right? just, but what I'm saying is, I think a lot of it was because Bellingham came into Foden's area a lot of time, which meant Foden had to come inside, which is the kind of adjustment which I think is natural. That you yeah. would think if they play together, if they train together, which they don't get to do with the national team, especially it's when just, Bellingham's given another week after the after the Champions League final. Yeah, true. But if you play Bellingham as a 10, then this is always going to happen. They all they both want to be in the same areas, in the same positions, in the same pockets of space. And that's, I think that's probably, it's really problematic. And also, I do think that Kane, you take a, away a lot of things that Kane would do well, like dropping a bit deeper, get the board, get involved in all the, the, the build-up phase and, and all of that, which he didn't do yesterday because that, area was already taken and occupied by by Bellingham most of the time yeah I think and again I, I I think personally I'm all right with that I think Kane should stay up there occupy the, 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 the defenders in this team with the players you have around yeah, there's other ways to make it work I disagree because then he gets no service the service doesn't come like that the only the only way got is the he, bow and cross and that's it and that well, I know he didn't keep but again this takes us back to Southgate because yeah. frankly, I don't want to hear people crying about he needs to get service. Look at when he's got look at the players behind him. You got Saka, right? Oh, he's such a fantastic winger. You've got Foden, player of the year or thereabouts yeah. in the Premier League. You've got Jude freaking Bellingham. You've got Declan Rice, who I mean, I, how do we blame like this idea? Well, he has to drop deep to get service. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You do that he when you're at Spurs and you've got bad players behind you, fine. No, but he should not be needing to do that. He should be sitting there. And waiting for the service, right? No, but if he his game is not to drop. his fault. He's not dropping to get service. His game is dropping. This is what he does. No, it's not. It's, it's, can I just say, we need to hit this but on the head. This is not It's true. something that he can do. And it's something that he I, has done very, very effectively, right? I disagree. That's his game, man. He's a, he's a 10 and a 9. He, you know what? So these, are, these are labels. These are labels. That's the, that, it's the same thing. Yes, that's what he was. It's not what he did this year at Bayern. Uh, if you look at if you look at I his average positions and his heat, he's maps. got eight assists as a number nine. So of don't course, tell me because Bayern score a billion goals. Doesn't and they matter. Run up the he court. gets assists because he drops and people go into space and he serves right. them. But like, Scamacca could have had a hat trick of, of assists for Italy because he laid the ball off. You know that's fine. But I'm saying no, is in same. this England team, if you take away if you take away the reference point, if you have Kane drop into the number ten position all the time, and you already have an issue with Foden who wants to be a ten, and you want Foden to be a yeah, ten, yeah, you want Foden to be in some side, and you have Jude Bellingham, one of his strengths is making those runs into the box and yeah. getting into that area. Declan Rice, that's another one of his strengths. So you're, but you're sacrificing that by and understandably having him keep deeper. What you want? You want to send Kane to go and congest that area that's even why, more? That's why I think the Bellingham position should not be a ten. That's why he has to play deeper. That's why there's no trend in well, this team. That's why you play Rice and Bellingham deeper. And then you've got to be more space for Foden and for Kane. Right, at that and point, why the, don't we make it even... It's just about space. Let's get even more creative. Let's play Rice at center back, play Bellingham in the right position. Then you've got even more ballers in the team. No, and you've got no, even no. more space. You don't need more ballers in the team or more space. It's just this, this makes more sense to me. And then the two, the two touches for Kane in the first half, it's not, it's not about service. That means you don't even pass him the ball. So why would you not? You can't even find him. So I'm not talking service for him to score. I'm just, I'm just saying in, in 45 minutes, there's no passes to him. He doesn't get the ball. So he's just not involved in anything. And that's not what you want. For no, 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 none of your right. players should have two touches in 45 minutes. Sorry, are you going to blame Kane or are you going to blame the players around him in South No, no I'm not right. blaming Kane for anything. I'm just saying so this no, structure... Don't blame. Explain. Yeah, this structure tactically... This structure tactically doesn't work. If you can't... If you can't pass the ball to one of your best players, it just doesn't work. It, it just, it's just not working for me. It's Southgate then. Yeah, exactly. But that's okay. the problem. You know, that's <laughs> you the problem go. I have. I that was that's the problem I have, really. I knew that was coming. Um, on Serbia at the World Cup, I remember going, I saw their game against Brazil and I was so excited. I yeah, thought, yeah, I remember. They can go and they can, you know, spring a surprise. And of course, no, it doesn't happen. And I know how you feel about Stojkovic and... It does feel that they're always less than the sum of their parts. But I thought in the second half they gave a really good mm. account of themselves. And I'm not writing them off at all. I think actually if they get into the knockouts, if, I mean, Rakovic may be a bit of a surprising goal instead yeah. of uh, Vanya. But they did well. They I'm have not. the tools. Yeah. Yeah, incredibly. And even when Kostic got injured, you think, okay, right, he's one of their 
up there on that left to put crosses in for Mitrovic, Vlaovic, etc., etc. And Mladenovic came on and did, did really well when he came on. I think for me the biggest issue is Stojkovic because even in the reading of the game yesterday, you could see that in the second half, England were inviting the pressure, that Serbia would have a lot of the ball, that they would almost camp into the England camp, in the England side of the pitch. Leave Mitrovic on. And you know you're going to put crosses in. Why not, why, not, why not having him on the pitch? He's your main threat in the air. And then you, you took him off after 60 minutes or 59 minutes, which didn't make any sense because then they put crosses in. And obviously, Vlaovic is, you know, can do well in the air. But against Gay, Stones, Walker, Rice, all of that, you know, why not leaving yeah. Mitrovic? I just didn't. I knew Mitrovic came back from an injury and didn't look that sharp. But to leave him in the box and say to him, listen, cro a cross at some point is going to come in. I want you there. Instead, you put Jovic on. Jovic is not going to do anything in that kind of context. Well, because Jovic isn't good. Or certainly not <laughs> as good in the air as Mitrovic either, even less. Yeah, I, I, I think the idea was to go, and, and if you saw it, like Jovic and, uh, and Vlavic kind of played on the same line, the idea mm. was to tie up the center backs, maybe create some space for Dusan Tadic, who then also came on rather than have Bellin. Vlavic behind, right? You wanted to get Vlavic closer to the goal. Vlavic is your most athletic, biggest, strongest. Yeah, you can play Tadic, Vlaovic, and Mitrovic together. It's not a problem. We thought they would line up like that. But so they didn't, I'm saying. Yeah, but like then, then when you're on top, do that instead of taking off Mitrovic. I, I think Mitrovic, Vlaovic together puts more of an onus on Vlaovic to move around, whereas I think yeah, Jovic will defer a little bit more to, to Vlaovic. I think maybe that was his thinking. Um, final point, and just, just to wrap this, obviously this was seen as one of the at-risk games um, of the World Cup. Yeah, of the Euros. Uh, sorry, of the Euros. Um, and there was no serious violence, but yeah. there was fighting before the game. Uh, there's footage, actually. In the city center, yeah. In, in the city center of... It looks like the Serbia fans are in a bar, and they get attacked. And there's a scene where the son of the president of Serbia... Really? Kind of I runs out that. as if he wants to get involved in the, si in the fight. He's got bodyguards with him. No way. These one is a really burly bodyguard. The other one is more of like the little sneaky, quick. Yeah. Imagine to be martial artist guy. They go and they hold him back. Um, it's not clear who started what. Although the police did say England and Serbia fans were involved. A bunch of Serbia fans were yeah, taken arrested, into custody. Yeah. Um, again, from the video, and this is very incomplete. It looks as if the Serbia fans are in a bar, and somebody right. comes and engages them. Um, but all told, I think nine arrests is probably a positive yeah. result. That there hasn't been more so far. You know, knock on wood. Yeah, there hasn't been uh, no, you know any right. of the stuff that we want. We don't want to see it. Europe. No, that's right. All right, enough England, enough Serbia. How about some quick hits instead? Let's go, guys. Spain begin the tournament with a three 0 thumping of Croatia. Jules, forty six percent possession. Speedy wingers mm, yeah. finding Ruiz sitting the ball into space. No tiki taka inside. We're done with this stereotype. And I hope people listen and watch our preview of the Euros because that's exactly what we said about Spain. We said forget about what you saw before. Sometimes very sterile possession with De La Fuente is very different. You saw that pass from Ruiz for Morata on the first goal. And you saw, like you said, for the first time in, since the 2008 Euros final against Germany, 136 games, Spain didn't have more possession than the opposition. Like you said, different mentality, different philosophy. It worked. If you look deeper to the stats, Croatia had higher expected goals. They obviously missed a penalty. So, yes, it's a good win from Spain. It was not all perfect and they won't get carried away, but it's great to start like that. I think with Nacho and Lenormand at the back yeah. and Kukureya, I think it's good that they don't get carried away. Yeah, exactly. Host nation Germany also start with a victory. A huge 5-1 destruction of Scotland. Gab, you were there. What did you learn? I didn't learn much. <laughs> okay. And the reason I didn't learn much is it's really hard to, to tell how good Germany are because Scotland were really so poor mm. and then they went down to 10 men and then they were negative. Uh, you know, to take off, uh, you know, you're losing 3 0, what do you do? Oh, and you've had a man sent off. So let me take off a center forward so I can turn my 5 4 1 into a 5 4 0. You know, um, <laughs> But a lot of enthusiasm. I think nerves were were, were, were definitely definitely steadied. Um, I wrote a whole a whole piece about it. I made the analogy with 
I mean, you don't drink, you wouldn't get this, but like sometimes you might get a double shot of scotch when you got to calm yourself down. Before, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? This, this is kind of what it felt like. You okay. don't want false courage, but Vert's fantastic. Musiala, um, very good coming inside. Harvard still the best on earth. I think it's yeah. very, very obvious. Of course. A word on Robert Andrich. I don't know how much there is upstairs with this guy. To get yourself booked. Yeah. In this game, when you're 2-0 up at home, in the opener, you're the only holding midfielder on the team, and you get yourself booked for a foul in the opposition half to stop who? Scott McFreaking Tomini. Yeah. Not smart. Not, Not smart, smart so That's why you came off half time. You only played 45 minutes. Exactly. Maybe. Switzerland down, Hungary 3-1 as Quadro Dua comes out of nowhere to score the opener. Oh, I love him. Jules, did we underrate Murat Yakin's boys a little? Well, I don't think we underrated them. We underrated Yakin himself. We said, quite criticized back home. We're not really too convinced about him. But they played well. And th that first goal, the Dua one, great build-up uh, without Bisha too. And the way they finished that. And to go one it up against a team like Hungary, which the, the whole game plan is to defend for as long as possible and then try to hit the counter. Then that, that's it. Then I think Hungary were just like, okay, what do we do now? And didn't have much of an idea. So good win, good start for them in a group where really you would fancy the Swiss to finish behind Germany in second place and qualify. And also that took a bit of pressure, I think, off Yakin and stopped the criticism a little bit for now, certainly. Yeah, I think defensively, uh, Hungary really, really yeah. all over the place. Mm. And I think it's going to be really hard for them to to keep their level. But again, you look at the players, they are what they are. Yeah, definitely. Slovenia and Denmark battled to a 1-1 draw yesterday as Christian Eriksen makes his return to the Euros with a goal three years and f uh, three years and four days after his frightening collapse onto the pitch. Gab, did Denmark throw this away? And which striker did you prefer, Hoyland or Sesko? Oh, in this game, 100% Sesko. Ah, oh, that uh, half volley on the post was something else. I, I mean, honestly, like, I, you don't realize, like, with Leipzig, I guess everybody moves quickly around him. So, yeah, like, yeah. but you don't realize how fast he is for a big man yeah. when when the game's kind of slowed down in 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 this sort of context. Um, I thought Slovenia could have gotten more out of it, should have gotten more out of it. Word on Ericsson, obviously, it is hugely emotional oh, yeah. to see to see him out there. Look, we've seen him play for. It's not like he went away, uh, but he's still somebody who's you know playing with. Um, was effectively, I mean, it's not technically called a pacemaker. You're the doctor out of the two of us. Yeah. But it's still yeah, 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 something that, that he wouldn't be given a license to play. In Italy, there's a reason you have to leave yeah. Inter. You're not allowed to play with it. I don't know what would happen if, if the Euros were, 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 were in Italy, know, whether yeah, he yeah, could yeah. even play there. Um, so uh, I don't know how good Denmark are going to be. I was not really impressed. I don't think they're going to have the sort of run that they had last time around mm. because there's a lot of pieces that um, that I think where they need to do better. But I was really impressed with Slovenia, and I think it's a huge point for them. They just never gave up, did they? No. Which was good to see, although there's a big chance for Hoyland that Oblak saves, you know, from the cross, the human cross, I think it was, a cross goal. And then if he scores that, it's 2 0 up, and then the rest is different. But they came back into the game, got a bit lucky came back, and then you're right, at the end could even have won it. Jules, we're not done. We got more quick hits. Yes. A late Val Vighorst goal allows Holland to come from behind and beat Poland 2-1. Jules, will you credit the Dutch guy, a.k.a. <laughs> Ronald Koeman, for his inspired substitutions? Wait, inspired you, 1-1. What are you going to do? You're going to bring Vegos on. He's your super sub. He scored seven of his last nine goals for Holland, for the Netherlands, off the bench. He didn't just so bring him is... on. He brought Frimpong on. Yeah. Not that he had a similar impact. The goal still comes from a deflected cross by Nathan Ake. So you had a deflected goal, the first one, and the second goal that comes from a deflected cross by Ake. But I thought they played well, to be honest. They created chances. Memphis should have scored. I know he's our boy, but he needs to sort out those feet in front of goal. <laughs> what agree. about... I don't know. I looked at this and I see the midfield and it's Vermeer. Yeah, it's young. And Ryan, this isn't the young. Schulten. It's like, why don't Schouten? Do I need to see this guy? I, I don't. No, but you've lost Coop Miners, you've lost the Rune, you've lost the Young. You know, it's not like. It's true. It's I, I, I guess we give him a pass for now. Right? Yeah, and Chavi Simmons on the right, again, I'm not so sure. But where do you want to put him? That's the thing. Yeah, but if you don't play him on the left, where he's his best position, if you want Gakpo there, if you prefer Gakpo, because you're Dutch guy, you would prefer Gakpo than Chavi Simmons. Not us, but him, yes. You're the Dutch Maybe. guy, not a Dutch yeah, guy. Yeah, Most Dutch people, guy. no doubt, would yeah. prefer Chavi <laughs> yeah, Simmons. I'm yeah. sure, too. Italy go a goal down after just 23 seconds, the quickest goal in Euro's history. But they come back. 
Gav, and they beat to beat Albania 2 1. Spalletti says they need to be more ruthless. Yeah, because they created a ton of chances, mm. but they played really, really, really well. I Especially the first was, half, yeah. Yeah, but that's what matters to me. Yeah. I don't care. After the game, whatever, you're gonna manage out the game, right? Um, but to 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 basically spot the opposition a goal uh in the way they did mm -hmm. and to go and to come back so convincingly to get right back into the game at two one. Again, they should have scored maybe three, maybe four, uh, maybe even more. Um, and then in the second half, obviously, there's going to be decline because yeah. Chiesa gets tired and has to come off and, and whatever else. And Albania had a chance at the end, Ray Menage, who, frankly, probably maybe the only mistake that I thought Calafiori, who was, who was yeah, wonderful in that game. Yeah. By the way, since Him you, and Bastoni. you like your left-footed Two left footers right? together, yeah. I know. It's rare enough to, How about to that? be mentioned. Loved it. Um, Absolutely loved it. And I thought Barella was was yeah. man of the match. A huge well, performance, on. and uh, yeah, brave all around. I, I thought from I thought I this this bodes well. Cautious it's optimism. A good start. Exactly. Exactly. Always a fun ride at Borussia Dortmund. Jules Edin Terzic is out, and Nuri Shaheen is in. Please help explain for those who might not understand how the <laughs> losing Champions League finalist coach gets axed so quickly. Should well, we blame Thibaut Courtois? Well, well, we could also maybe look at what they did in the Bundesliga and the fact that they finished fifth with a very average season for a team like them. After finishing second the year before, losing Jude Bellingham in the summer. Yeah, but none of this matters. No, but they finished second. They should have finished first and they should have won the title and they bought all day and he was partly to blame already for that. And then I guess you judge maybe more season over, over the whole length of the season, not just a Champions League campaign as good as it was until the final. I, I'm not sure. Maybe they felt that it was the right time to start something new in a new chapter. I'm not sure if Nuri Sain, by the way, is the answer either, you know. Well, he came in, didn't he? Like him and, yeah, uh, and, and Sven Bender, yeah. uh, one of the Bender brothers. There's two Bender brothers. The other the Bender, Bender brothers yeah. is Lars Bender. Eh, they're, both, they're both useful, yeah. useful Benders. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I don't know Nuri Shaheen, the former Antalya sport coach. They've got this whole boot room thing now going on with yeah. other players in, uh, in sort of front off positions. Hey, good for you. Look, I don't think Terzic was great. I'm not surprised that he's gone. No, no. But um, I don't think they need to pin the blame entirely on him because this is a really poorly put together team. Yeah, that's true. And speaking of Dortmund, Gab, Mats Hummers is also gone, which maybe is not a surprise considering how close he was to Edin Terzic. Well, not cl close, not in a good way. Well, no, but like, you know, it won't be off a new deal. He was out of contract and they're not going to renew it. So he wasn't a big Terzic fan either, as you said, but that didn't help. No, um, <clears throat> I think the club were shocked by what, what he said, obviously, in the run-up to the Champions yeah. League final. Um, and I think, look, he was obviously in the anti-Turcic camp. But I mean, close as in back-to-back -back, uh, announcement for both of them to leave. That's yeah, what yeah. I mean, not close. Uh, like in I think, though, from the club's perspective, like, ooh, veteran player here who could speak out. Yeah. Not what we want, right? Um, and so maybe that's their thinking. Um, he's been linked with the move to Saudi, obviously. I don't think he's going there. I want to Surely see him somewhere not. else in Europe. Yeah. And, I th and I think he can help. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think yeah, I agree with you. Can help. I agree. Ah, your old buddy Eric Ten Hag, who will be continuing as manager of Manchester United, appeared on NOS. NOS yes. is the Dutch state broadcaster. Yes. He said club officials showed up without warning in his hotel or his holiday home in, in Ibiza, wherever he was, he was on vacation, to tell him the job was still his. Yeah, that's right. I Did mean, you, you really story. think they just show up without Surely warning? Surely not. He also said that they told him that they spoke to Tuchel. He said, that hurts. And I can't do the impression like you can. You're very good at it. I'm not. But he also said they told him that, yes, we spoke to Tuchel, but we have the best manager in you. Uh, I mean, come on. That's, I refuse to think they told him that. It's I, not possible they told him. You're the best. <laughs> we have the best right now after trying to get rid of him to get somebody else. Hence why they spoke I, this to This is his manager. version of events. Again, I don't, I don't think he's a bad person. Inside. No. I just think he... Probably needs some help communicating yeah. um, because this, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, he also said that they were going to extend his contract. And he says, but it won't be easy. Yeah. Like, Why? Uh, why? He, sh he should like literally say like, yeah, please, anything. I'll, I'll Unless he says it's not going to be easy because A, it's a negotiating point. Or B, they do take his final say away on players. Yeah. Which obviously the club want to do. Yeah, yeah, and he probably doesn't want to get go to let go. That's true. And United have also been linked Gab, with two centre backs in Matisse Delit and Jared Branthwaite. Do you like those two options? I like them. I think they're obviously very different uh, plosa, uh, profiles. Uh, mm -hmm. Delit, he's twenty five now. He's gonna he's gonna cost you an absolute mint yeah. because he's on a big salary from Bayern. I think 
even with a couple of years left, even with other players coming into Bayern, I think they're gonna, you know, they're gonna demand a lot of money. Branthwaite won't be cheap either, although Everton in a really bad financial situation, and obviously Branthwaite uh, a lot less proven. Um, as a partner for Lisandro Martinez, I would go Branthwaite again. Yeah. Prices and numbers uh, being equal. There's no question though that this is a position that that yeah, you need to strengthen. Yeah. France kick off their campaign in a few hours against Austria. Jules, you'll be there, but in the meantime, what do you make of Marcus Turam and Kylian Mbappe talking elections? Well, I uh, was really impressed, especially by Marcus Turam. Kylian did his job as a captain, didn't want to get too involved or committed, but still enough to back up his mate and the team, etc. But didn't call out, for example, the far right, the French far right, the Rassemblement National, like Turam did, by saying we have to stop them. The situation is so so bad, so serious now. I love that from Marcus, considering who his dad is, it was inevitable that would happen. But also the fact that the elections have invited themselves in these Euros for France, mm. in these preparations, because we were always going to ask the players about, about are you going to vote, who are you going to vote for, those kind of questions, because the snap elections are so close to the Euros and at the same time as well. So it's inevitable. Mbappe was quite strong yesterday when he said the priority is not the football. Right now, the priority is what's happening back home in terms of elections. We can't let the extreme win. So it's really interesting. Is that a distraction? Probably, and something Deschamps would not have wanted to. It's an interesting contrast with England, of course, who also have elections uh, around yeah. the same time. I don't think I've heard anybody ask any England oh. player who no. they're voting for, what Pickford they think, or, or, yeah. or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Jack <laughs> Rouse Kelly has that, an agent. Made it very clear, Gab, that the Napoli star whose Georgia side faced Turkey on Tuesday here in Germany wants to move on. He wants to leave Napoli. Antonio Conte, the new Napoli manager, won't like this. No, and by the way, the dad and agent are two different people just for the yeah. avoidance uh, uh, of doubt. Um, so this is, he was quoted in a, in a Georgian uh, newspaper called Sporting Medi. He says, I don't want people to think that Kvara is going to want to stay in Naples. We want to leave. We're just waiting for the end of the Euros so that we don't disturb Kvica. Yeah. Because, of course, you coming out and announcing this, <laughs> uh, whatever. Uh, the priority is uh, to, for us to move on to a team that plays in the Champions yeah. League. I, Jules, I find this, like, obviously, you're in a situation. He's still on that tiny contract. Yeah. He signed on for, for a long, long time. He's got every right to go and, and seek a new deal. Yeah. But this just seems really, really crass to come out I and know. do it in this way, right? Yeah, and he said, like, oh, he's had four managers in a year. Okay, but that, now Conte is here, you would think that Conte is better than the four managers that Varaskelia played for last season. Certainly, you know, really. So the, this whole yeah. argument of like, yeah, the instability <laughs> is a problem. Yes, yeah. there's no it's, Champions League. It's not. No, nah, it's, it's pretty good. And, and I actually want him, though. Nah, so maybe I like, if like, they move, if he moves on, it's good, good, good fee for Napoli. Germany made headlines when they introduced pink, or rather, as they it's <laughs> called it, it's semi-lucid fuchsia okay, away jerseys. Yeah. Adidas says they have far outsold other Germany away jerseys in the past. What kind of a loser or weirdo gets a Germany away jersey? Well, if like, you like the color, if you well, like the, the shape, the color. No. If you're German, I suppose it's okay. If you're not, <laughs> it's, I don't know, concerning. But anyway, Adidas say, uh, so Jules, are Adidas are really big on this. Yeah. You're more into this stuff than I am. Yes. Do you like it? I do. And, should we, should we, because we have to link everything to Lionel Messi. Should we actually credit Lionel Messi for this and the Inter Miami picture? Maybe, or maybe Palermo from the past. The or pink even, and black attack? Or maybe the Juventus pink shirt that they had at some point as In well. In the 1930s know. when nobody remembers, yeah. But still, it's, it's been done before. Listen, now those, some of those shirts are lifestyle piece of clothing, right? They're, they're more than just football shirt. You wear them in the street, you wear them everywhere, not just when you play football with your mates or when you train or when you... So I can see the success of it. To be fair, I haven't seen many here while we've been here. So I, I, there sure there, there were a bunch of the Germany game. And are, I don't I know, know if we're going to get to see them because I don't know if they're going to play yeah. their, with their way jerseys. I mean, they yeah, might. They I don't might. know. Yeah, exactly. An update on Fabian Ötzele, who has been confirmed officially as the new Brighton boss, Gav. It's not just the fact that he's 31 and the youngest ever Premier League manager, of course, in history. It's also that you've looked at his disciplinary records. Yeah, he's talked about it, and he kind of laughs. And says, ha, 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 I have anger management pro, uh, <laughs> issues. I haven't checked to see if these numbers are real because he used to play for something, and, and this is true. I'm not making up the is name of this really team. Is it really true? 
What's Pippin, the name? I, I, this whole thing seems made up. He played for a team named Pippins Reed. I mean, what kind of weirdos name? Like, oh, what town should we live in? Ah, yes, let's call it Pippins Reed. It just sounds all wrong. What, what level is Pippins Reed in? Do we I, know? I, I don't know. It's, it's, okay. I think it's the fourth tier of German okay, football. Okay. Anyway, he was player coach there. Right. Um, and in 91 games, he got 46 yellows and six red cards. Wow, that's a lot. And apparently, it's not. He's not. It's because he argues. It's. It's not so much that he's like dirty. Yeah, or yeah. he was dirty. So yeah, as a coach, that's not really what you want. It'd be interesting. Yeah. You know what? He's obviously a very smart guy. So I can only assume that he's laughed it off. It's maybe part of his. Uh, he's come to terms of it. He says, "I recognize yeah. I have this problem now as a coach. I'm not like that. I don't know what his record, uh, disciplinary record was at, at St. Pauli, but yeah, 46 yellow car, yellows so and six odd. reds. That, that's. <laughs> That's, that's some Robert Andrick stuff. Yes, yeah, that's, exactly. that's hard to do. Bayern makes the first big signing of the Vincent Company era as they pay $30 million to meet Hiroki Ito's release clause from Stuttgart. Jules, I guess they like their left-footed <laughs> center backs as much as you do, but yeah. it feels like a lot for a guy who's 25 and coming from Stuttgart. Yeah, I Doesn't guess Doesn't bring so. Sebastian Hernes with yeah, him. Yeah, that was his release close. Um, and the pay there. He had a great season, there's no doubt. Really outstanding. One of the best centre-backs in the in the league. Is that enough? Yeah. For example, we still haven't seen him in, in the Champions League, for example. You know, we've seen a bit Ooh. of the same with Kim when he moved from Napoli. And then he had had a best, an underwhelming first season in Bayern. So, well, okay, so... They now have five center backs, um, if I'm counting correctly. Yeah. We talked about the lake before, possibly on the market. We talked about Upamecano being horrendous. Yeah. But maybe he said a... that I think he will look into it after the Euros, his future. So he both can of them might go. Yeah, they can look, they can go, but this is the usual thing. They're on big, big money. Yeah, true. So we assume Kim is staying, yeah? Yeah, we think so. And your boy Dyer. Eric Dyer. Of course, yeah. And I really... Ito, yeah. So at least one of... The Lert and Upamecano would have to stay. You want ideally you want four. Would it, and Ito's coming in for that. They're not going to play Ito. Yeah. He's not like he's going to play left back. He's played some left back. In the no, past true. Before. Yeah. No, they want to keep that left back. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The swap deal between Aston Villa and Juventus rumbles closer. Gab Weston McKenney and Samuel Ling Jr. going one way, and Douglas Luiz and in a surprise twist, women's team forward Alicia Lehman going the other. Obviously, they are a couple in. In, in real life. Obviously, because everybody knows that. No, no, sure, everybody just, in our audience knows that. Alicia Lehman and Douglas Luiz. No, no, but that's why we mentioned them both stars, there. Right? That's why we mentioned them both yes, there. Yes, of course, of course. All, all I'm saying, it's not like, uh, you know, Zach and Julie Art situation. No, no, right? true, okay. true. So obviously, yes. Hey, look, if I can move them both, you know, why not? Yeah. The dentists have a have a good women's team. Certainly, it's probably equivalent to, uh, to Villas. Um, it's funny because... This is an accounting deal, so this, this yeah, is, which doesn't make it a bad deal for both clubs. Not and like for a piano charter deal, right? No, no, no. Okay. This is going to be one where I think the fee is going to make a lot of sense, and this is because these are all players who have what you might call a very low residual value yeah. uh, on their books, right? Douglas Luiz's, I worked this out. It's about two million because he's been there a long time, okay, and it wasn't a big fee. Weston McKinney's about five and a half million. These are euros, and Ealing Junior, I think, is a couple hundred thousand. Because they all cost almost nothing when they got from yeah, Chelsea. Yeah. So if you can put, so, but a 60 million valuation for Douglas Luiz is not 60 million euros again. Yeah. It's perfectly that's reasonable. Yeah, right? That's, the, that's his It's, it's not bad. Yeah. So if you do that, then you've made 58 million off of yeah. Douglas Luiz, which more than pays for, you know, what you're going to pay for presumably a four year contract for, for, for McKenney and, and Ealing Jr. And the same works in reverse. The other way. It's the magic of amortization. Yes, of and this is how you can fix the books PSR. Aren't you surprised there's no more deals like that? I mean, they're not easy to make because you're right. You need to find the right balance of it that everybody yeah. is keen and interested. And look, I, I think from the player's perspective too, um, Douglas Luiz, I'm guessing he probably wanted too much to extend his contract. Yeah. Um, and from McKenney, in McKenney's case, obviously, he had a year left. They offered him a pay cut. Pay cut yeah. Uh, and Ealing Jr. is, you know, as a young English player mm. coming home. So, you know, makes sense. Yeah. But about that Zerbi is reportedly on his way to Marseille, Jules. Yeah. How excited are you? More Incre so than Raymond Dominic. Obviously. Yeah, Dominic, no fan. But, I mean, again, who's listening to Raymond Dominic? Like, what did he say? He yeah. said, like, oh, he can't go to Marseille. His level is Brighton and Rennes. 
Yeah, which which but, well, sorry, what, who gives this guy a microphone? I, like, know, what, I don't know. Man. That's what he has to do now because they even like uh, got rid of him. He was the head of the kind of like uh, managers' union in France, and they got rid of him of that as well. He belongs in a zoo. Out. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But for Marseille. It's incredible. I think it's an amazing coup because they were going for such a concert. So, who's a great coach? There's no doubt. Very different to the Zerbi. Never thought that they could get the Zerbi. It's like you are at a party, right? And there's this amazing, stunning girl there. And you think, oh my God, I would love to ask her out. But you think, like, oh, she's out of my league, really. So you go for the mate who's not as good looking. And yeah, this is probably going to work. And then that girl said, hey, actually, I like you, Marseille. And that's Roberto De Zerbi. And you go, oh, my word. So they had to find an agreement with him. And to be fair, he lowered his wages expectations and demands. Then Brighton, they had to pay them off as well because obviously we're still under contract, even after parting ways. And they also found an agreement. Well done. I can't wait to see the Zerbi in Ligue 1. This is going to be a lot of fun. Oh, great. Uncle George must be a little bit annoyed, though. Yeah, he is. Right. Unless he's got something else for Contesto, maybe. I don't know. We'll oh, see what that is. Paris Saint-Germain, meanwhile, have a new keeper to annoy my boy Gigi Donnarumma. It's Matvey Safanov from Kuban Krasnodar in Russia with a reported fee of $20 million. Just, Just before I talk to you about Safanov, I've got one for you, Gabby, as well. Because talking about Marseille and coaches, past and present and future, etc. Reno Gattuso, he's on, his way, he's on his way Sorry, to Ajuk Split. This is a bit of a weird one, no? What's Uncle George again? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Ajax Split must be a, a friend club again. I don't know. The best yeah. thing I look, I, it's funny. He's like he's sort of Reno Gattuso. Like you know, kind of like when um, when you flush the toilet and the stuff goes round and round. And goes yeah, yeah. And lower. It sort of feels that way. Like he's crazy. They say this with the greatest of respect. You know, he was the Milan manager at one point. Yeah, it's like Valencia, Napoli, and yeah, oh yeah, Napoli that's too, it, yeah. and whatever. It's Uncle George thing. I don't know how well it's working out for him, but <laughs> like I joke, but I mean, Hajduk played a great pass, but they were third last year. Yeah, you know, um, I, I'm sure Slavin Bilic w- wished him well, but I know. it's going to be tough. I agree. So, so Safranov, yes. Yeah, so well, tell me about this. Sorry about jumped the gun there, but what's the strange deal? Strange one. No sanctions. No? Strange one. Fifteen million plus five. So as you say, it could be up to twenty. Very similar profile to. Donnarumma, for example. So Very similar you, age. Yeah. If you told me, like, for example, they signed this great keeper for his distribution and with the ball at his feet, I would have said, okay, I can see why, maybe. But now, it's very similar. And also, apparently, he's got an issue with his ex-wife and the custody of their child. And the reason why, he, apparently, they might, he might not have been able to leave Russia because he hasn't paid... All the money in uh, like children in, uh, in in child support in child support exactly. So he owes his ex wife money for that child who she's looking after. So this is this looks really messy, and I'm like, okay, it's a lot of money, no, for something so. I, I uncertain. also don't. I mean, obviously, clubs do do business with clubs in Russia and yeah. so on, but I presumably Paris Saint Germain have to pay for this. Uh, I don't quite That's know the ins and outs whether you can. Because you are, there are sanctions in place. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Krasner just receive the money. I don't know. I don't know. It's fine. Reports in Barcelona suggest that Manchester City are playing hardball when it comes to Joao Cancelo. They quote a price of 30 million euros and are ready to take him with them on preseason. <laughs> when we know they don't want him there. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, this is, you know, part of being says, like, I would say this is mean and unnecessary. It's mean to Barcelona. It's mean to Joao Cancelo. On the other hand, it's not mean to Joao Cancelo because, dude, you signed this enormous contract. Yeah. You, Manchester City, and by the way, they we say they haven't put a foot wrong in transfers and done so many great things. There are some evident things that they really, really screwed up, yeah. really, really misjudged. The Jacques Cancelo thing is one thing. And yeah. you know what? If I'm cheeky or Ferran Soriano, I might go to Pep. Hey, Pep, we love you. You've done so much of this club. You've done so much for our careers. Yeah, of course. Because, let's face it. What would Ferran Soriano be doing right now? They've been <laughs> messing around with failing airlines if, if it wasn't, wasn't for Man City. But... Um, this Joe Cancelo thing, when you know the guy, you've worked with him, you say, yeah, we can work together. Give it, let's, give, let's give him this very long, very lucrative contract. It's like the one mistake. I don't know. Yeah. I, it's one mistake. I might admit so much success. They would sort it out. They would find a way. Surely. I don't know if this makes sense for Barcelona. I mean, unless Cancelo wants to take a massive pay cut. He's yeah, got three right. years left on his contract. Yeah, no, no, true. And I don't think he's been actually that great either. No, I don't, I don't think he's a great fit for this team. Yeah, I agree. 
Folks uh, in Milan are freaking out over your boy Taylor Adams after he was quoted yeah. as saying that he was focused on the Euro- Euros, yeah. which is good. Yeah. But that we would see later if he was staying at the club, which is not good. It's not good. Jules, there's two years left on his deal. It's poor get off the pot, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I think the fact that Bayern Munich might lose Alfonso Davies to Real Madrid and then they will be looking for a left back and they really like him and he's kind of... That kind of profile, super attacking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Maybe it's just a bit of noise as well in terms of negotiation skill. Two years left. Yeah, two yeah. years left, as you said. Uh, indeed, because I think he's very happy in Milan and certainly his family too. We'll have to see. I just love him at Milan. I think, you know, he's had the armband. He's a, he's a big player for them. He's a key player. Maybe let's see with Fonseca now coming. I think I think it's a good place for him to be at, to be fair. Yeah, I think it's a better place for him than, than Bayern. And okay. He did cut a team-friendly deal um, when he signed his, uh, his extension with, with Milan last time. So maybe that also comes yeah, into play. Gab, yeah, there were scary moments in Hamburg uh, yesterday on Sunday after a man was shot four times by police just steps away from where the Dutch fans had gathered ahead of the game against Poland. Yeah, and uh, you know they, they shut down uh, the streets in the city center. It's a lot of concern about this. Apparently, this is, according to the police anyway, this has absolutely nothing to do with the Euros. It was just a guy who, you know, might have been disturbed somehow. Yeah. That was, those are the words the police used. He came out of a shop with what looked like a homemade Molotov cocktail. And, and an axe as well. Well, okay, I saw the video. Like, yeah, I saw the video. That's not an axe. That's a hammer. That's a ball peak hammer that he's holding. It's not an axe. And honestly, people in the media, right, are my colleagues. If you can see what he's holding... I mean, if you know the English language, it's not a double, a double-sided axe or whatever the hell they were. They, 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 I like it's not funny. But anyway, they he was pepper sprayed by the yeah, police. Didn't work. Didn't respond to the pepper spray, and so he was shot. He is recovering. It's not like they shot him in the head. No, no, no. I, I, I'm not. I think it, it seems like it was reasonable precaution from the police given the situation uh, that they were in. And they were good at informing people. I thought. Yeah, and they, they were they straight were up about what happened yeah, yeah, and. Exactly. Because, you know, there is a large crowd of people. You could create a stampede. You could create, you know, a lot of things. Alexander Pavlovich has a new deal at Bayern Jewels, locked up through 2029. This makes sense for all, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, Really bright talent, young players who played quite a lot uh, last season for Bayern, would have been in the the Euro squad for Germany unless, uh, until he got that injury just before, which which have been really hard, I think, for him to, uh, to digest. But great, you, you, you tie him up uh, and he's one for the future, without a doubt. Fifth Pro, the International Players' Unions, has launched a legal challenge against FIFA and specifically the expanded 32-team Club World Cup in 2025. Yeah, and it's the usual thing. They didn't like the fact that they weren't consulted and they talk about too many games and this whole thing and the players being overworked and so on. Like, I'm not saying overwork isn't an issue that it's not a problem mm-hmm. um but it's an issue for the top 0.0001 percent of players yeah i don't want this players union to just be an advocate for those guys i i don't i really don't understand it yeah, in the yeah, same yeah, way that I mean. in the real world people who have real jobs i.e not running around after a ball there are some people who work 18 20 hours days and get highly 18 hour uh, 18 20 hour uh, yeah days and yet highly rewarded for it. And they have stresses and maybe they have to take drugs and it's yeah. bad for their lives and their mental health and whatever, but they still do it by choice, right? This is, and it's very few people like that. And this is this tiny, tiny number of people. So I would like to see them rather than going on about the overwork, which is, it's a fair argument, but it's the players who have to take action on that. It's yeah, the players yeah. who have to say, we're not going to play unless we get these guarantees. Not just you sending lawyers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I would like to see a more organic solution. Like, for example, because FIFA is going to come back and these people, FIFA are going to say, guess what? We're the only tournament. We're going to make a bunch of money and we're going to redistribute this money to the clubs because of those 32 clubs, only eight, I think, are, are rich European clubs yeah. and the rest, and it's going to help the movement, help create more jobs for players, for your union members around the world. That's what they're going to say. Come back with something organic. Come back and say, okay, fine, but then we want some guarantees on the redistribution. We want to know how much money. We want to monitor how you're going to give this money yeah. out in the rest of the world to create more jobs and develop the game. And not enough with this Kevin De Bruyne and Rodri 10 bazillion minutes. Dude, no, take no, it up I with agree. Rodri's employer, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Pep, why do you keep playing this guy every single freaking game, yeah. right? 
I, I, there are other solutions, but it's always the same thing. And always, ah, oh, let's send a legal letter. Let's get more lawyers out there. You don't think they can stop the Club World Cup to be played in 2025, can they? Well, first of all, I don't, I'm not going to happen, right? I think it will happen. What would stop it is clubs pulling out, but yeah. we know that that's unlikely to happen. Uh, or players saying, no, I'm not going to do it. But it just seems like a silly hill to die on because, you know, the guy who plays for, I don't know if Old Son are even there, but it reminded of Old Son because you were so into that, that stupid Martin Adams story and his big beard. But whatever. <laughs> his big belly. Those guys are like, wait a minute. Why don't I get to play in the Club yeah, World yeah. Cup? Yeah, no, I have to play in the Asian Champions League. Nobody's watching, and I'm playing against uh, Al Nasser, and Ronaldo laughs at me. I want to play in the Club World Cup. Why can't I? Who are you to come and take this away? Or yeah. Auckland, or whatever other. I, again, I haven't checked the representative of these parts yeah, of the world. Yeah, yeah. Or some of the African yeah, sides. Yeah, no, honestly, no, imagine one of, some of the African sides are saying, like, look, I'm playing against Real Madrid. This dude scored a hat trick for me. Maybe you get a transfer for fee for him yeah. rather than have him pass through a dubious agent in the French second division and so on and leave nothing behind for African football. Yeah, that's true. These are the conversations we should be having. Yeah. Sorry, I take that. No, 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 I'm no, passionate right, about right. I want to talk about that. I don't want to hear about Rodri and his 10 billion minutes. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Lionel Messi sat down with our ESPN colleagues and said it was unlikely oh. that he would play at the Olympics for Argentina. Jules, you're Paris born and bred, I might have heard. Oh. I bet this makes you sad. It is because I've no been Messi, no Kylian. Yeah, because not long after Kylian said yesterday on Sunday, well, if Messi's not playing. I'm not playing. No, either. but he said like you know my club doesn't want to, so I won't be there. As what club? Real Madrid. To. Yeah, Meanies. Which is fine. No, you know, if only you had the leverage to go and tell them. If you told Real Madrid, guys, I am not signing. Uh, or what if you told Real Madrid, you guys? What you if you told Real Madrid, that. guys? If you pay me, you know what? I'm not going to go, but you can pay me two million less. And that's okay, because I mean I've got a hundred sure million tried. bazillion in the bank, and I'm Kylian Mbappe, and I'm Paris born and bred, just like my friend Jules. I'm sure, I'm sure he tries, but it was not meant to happen. It's okay, but it's a shame because I think, and I don't know if if I can make those Olympic dates official. I don't know if it's possible. They can't. They can't because it's at the start of the season, obviously, yeah. in, or certainly in the European domestic well, also season. Also, the IOC. It's all part of the agreement they have with the IOC. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to see. Fair enough. We will see La Cazette instead <laughs> for France. Okay. <laughs> You're so bad. You're laughing. You're so bad. And there will be other great Wait, players. So John Texter is allowing La Cazette. He is, oh, thank you, John. Thank you, you John. We appreciate you. We I, appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, I, I, actually, John Texter will probably be there too. Isn't skateboarding at the Olympics now? There is. I, at the Concorde as well. So lovely a surroundings. That's awesome. Not as a competitor, obviously, <laughs> but as a fan. Or maybe the other 50s. Uh, Olympics, I know, but yeah, you always want, I guess, as many best players or great players as you as you can. But we will still have fun there, you mm-hmm. know. And more Messi guy because he also talked about his future and saying that he thinks it's very likely that Inter Miami would be his okay. last club. This has made so many headlines yeah. around the world because it's Messi and because let's face it, we as a company we should a big deal because rightly so. We talk and talk all the time. Yeah, yeah great interview. This is completely meaningless. It's like, if you look at his face when he says it, like, I'm reading between the lines. I'm going to put words in your mouth, you know. Dude, you're asking me this question. What am I supposed to say? Oh, 100%. Right? I have no idea. Yeah. I'm not going to commit to going back to Rosario. I'm not going to tell. I'm never going to Saudi for the 100 bazillions. I don't know. I'm here. Yeah. I'm living day by day. Exactly. I'm living my best life with Inter Miami. He's enjoying it for sure. Let me enjoy yeah, it. Exactly. Right? And don't, exactly. don't break balls. This is my last club. When are you, when are you leaving? When are you, you know, come oh, on, man. Right? I know. And by the way, we need to talk Cristiano as well. Did we? talked about his last club when he's retiring. Oh, did he? He says he hasn't decided yet. <laughs> okay. So. But as obligatory, we got we to gotta be down. Oh, fine enough. 